to embroider the butterfly i have used two main stitches to embroider the entire butterfly uh, the first is the satin stitch as you can see the head of the antenna and I, in the video I will take you step by step uh, on every stitch with tips and the second stitch that I, that I have used is a variation of a back stitch which is called the whip stitch and using these two stitches the entire butterfly has been embroidered. If you see right now on your screen uh, I'm making the body of the butterfly using a satin stitch. So you take the needle out from one side and you go back on the other side and you pull the needle down and you again take it out from one side and you again insert the needle and that is how you make these parallel lines, straight lines and uh, you make the, uh, the accuracy of the satin stitch depends on how uh, accurately you put your needle, insert your needle into the place where you have traced so that makes your satin stitch accurate the entire embroidery over here has been done using two yarns i have used anchor yarns here this is a black color anchor yarn you can also use dmc yarn i would suggest that whenever you are embroidering always take a rough fabric uh, take a take a sample fabric uh, do the stitches do a little demo and then you start embroidering because uh, so that you do not spoil your final project always do a little practice if you are a beginner uh, i uh, this uh, embroidery i have traced uh, with uh, a pilot friction pen uh, my patterns are available on my etsy shop i have used two yarns over here as you can see and this is how the body of the a butterfly is made. Let's start making the back stitch. So take out your needle from under the fabric and make a small tuck forward then take it a little further take out the needle and go back into the hole previous hole and make a back stitch now again take the needle out a little ahead take the thread out go back in on the last hole and pull your thread down and you keep repeating that take your thread out a little ahead go back and make a back stitch from the hole and now again you repeat the process till you reach the end of the line of the antenna Okay, for smaller, for curved lines, make smaller length of back stitch. For straight lines, make a little longer stitches. The head of the antenna over here, I have made the satin stitch. Satin stitch in the later part of the video, I have explained in detail with the tips and the uses of the satin stitch and what are the things to avoid and what are the things to follow in the satin stitch. Uh, if you go uh, ahead in the video, I have explained it in detail when I have embroidered the wings of the butterfly using the satin stitch. Okay, coming back to the whipped back stitch. Now we have made the antenna half of the antenna has been made by using the back stitch and now we will complete the antenna making the whipped back stitch so we take out the just finish the head of the antenna okay this is the last stitch of the head of the antenna and now we take out the yarn the needle from one side of the back stitch Okay. and we take the needle under we roll the needle under the back stitch then we take the needle again and we wrap the yarn under the back stitch so we are not taking the needle under the fabric we are just taking the needle under the previous back stitch that we have done and that way we are just rolling the thread and we are whipping it so that is how the name comes that it is a whipped stitch satin stitch let's start by taking out the thread on the top side of the fabric you will be coming out of the fabric one side and going back under the fabric on the other side as you will continue this again and again to finish filling the entire shape you for even 
satin stitch you can draw lines uh, using a pilot friction heat erasable pen uh, in a distance of a half centimeter to give you the direction of the stitch that you have to follow one important thing to remember here is that when you are pulling the thread after every time you take the thread out of the fabric the tension of the thread should be equal for every stitch that you make so that the satin stitch is even looking an important tip is that for a consistent filling of the satin stitch you have to be very careful of the place where you take your needle down through the tracing line take it down exactly on the tracing line not a, a millimeter up or a millimeter down the more accurately you go up and down with the needle on the sketch line the smoother the outline of the satin stitch will be be patient with yourself because you will only master this skill with practice start the satin stitch decide on the direction of all the wings of the butterfly before you start so that you do not have to unravel anything and you have already decided on the direction and you can make that 1 cm lines like slanting lines to guide you as to the direction in which you will be stitching try and use less number of yarns to make satin stitch if you take more than 3 yarns it becomes very thick and uh, the neatness does not come here i have used two yarns in all of this embroidery the entire butterfly has been made by using two yarns back stitch take out your needle from under the fabric and make a small tuck forward and then go back in the same hole to make a back stitch come out a little ahead and go back in the previous hole to make another back stitch continue that along the circle make very small tiny length of stitches for this kind of a circle and for curved lines you should make smaller stitches and for straight lines you can make longer stitches if you make smaller stitches the curve is more even do you know that back stitch is one of the strongest stitches that is ever done because you go back so therefore you are doubling the stitch so even if you have to join two fabric surfaces or if you don't have a sewing machine and you want to attach two lengths of fabric together uh, you can use the back stitch back stitch is one of the most oldest stitches and one of the most utility based stitch ever you can use it to make outlines you can make the back stitch to make decorative stitches you can write letters you can make borders you can make lines uh, there are so many things that you can do with a back stitch whipped back stitch to do a whip back stitch let's start by doing a back stitch so take out your needle from under the fabric and make a small tuck forward and then go back in the same hole to make a back stitch come out a little ahead and then go back in the previous hole to make another back stitch continue this along the line make smaller stitch lengths on a curved line for a more even curve once the back stitch is done at the end of the line uh, then i will show you the variation of the back stitch which is called the whip stitch uh, the whip stitch is 
one of the variation and why do we use a whip stitch because a back stitch it looks like a stitch line it comes like little dashes or little tucks and it looks more like a machine embroidery but when you whip the stitch it becomes like a straight line so that the unevenness of the back stitch can be avoided if you make a back stitch and it almost looks as if you've done a sketching rather than embroidery so that is why we use the whip stitch and also whip stitch makes it look a little raised it gives it like a ropey feel to it once you finish the back stitch take out your needle on one side of the back stitch at the edge of the back stitch to do a whipped stitch you have to slide the needle through the bottom of each stitch so here what you have to do is slide the needle under the first back stitch to come out on the other side. Here you do not go under the fabric. You are just wrapping your thread around the back stitch that you made earlier. Now slide the needle from the second back stitch, come out on the other side. Next stitch again, slide under the bottom. Then next stitch, slide under the bottom again and keep going on in the same manner till you finish the line. If you like this video, please do share, leave a comment and also please subscribe for more such informational videos coming up soon. Thank you. As you can see that the area where the satin stitch has to be made is very small. So here you make a tuck in the center of the circle from one end of the circle to the other circle and then you make smaller satin stitch on either side of the circle. So you first start with the center and then you make one tuck on one side and the other other satin stitch on the other side of the center and then as you go ahead you keep reducing the length of your satin stitch. I have taken two yarns over here as I have done in the rest of the butterfly embroidery to make the satin stitch. This entire embroidery has been done using two yarns in the needle. Why have I used two yarns? To make it look delicate, to make it look dainty and because I did not want a very raised look. If you want a very raised kind of look, a very bulky kind of look, then you can go in for more number of yarns. But I would suggest for satin stitch, especially in an area which is such a tiny circle uh, as the edge of the butterfly wing, I would suggest that use less number of yarns. Two yarns uh, are good for this kind of a size of a circle. In the beginning of the video, I have uh, given you a material list. The material that you have to use for this, uh, the fabric that I have used is 100% cotton casement fabric and the needles you have to choose very carefully. Uh, the needle uh, should be either a 7 number needle or a 9 number needle, cruel needle, C-R-E-W-E-L, cruel needle which is most commonly and most advisable to use for embroidery. So do not use uh, em needles to use uh, to stitch fabrics use needle embroidery needles go to a store go to a craft store or go online and buy craft uh, embroidery needles to embroider this if you are a beginner, a beginner and you think that you cannot embroider in such a small tiny circle you cannot make the satin stitch then make uh, take small beads of black color and you can attach the beads over here or you can also if you are just using this embroidery as a wall decor which is normally how it is used you can also take a paint brush and you can just paint it uh, and you can use fabric color paint to color this black color uh, so that you have a fusion kind of look for your embroidery so the 
the dots can be painted or you can use a beads you can also use sequins if you want a shiny kind of look so there are a lot of different variations that you can give to your embroidery Satin stitch is one of the oldest and the most common stitches. It is mostly used to do filling stitches. So you can use satin stitch to fill flowers. You can use satin stitch to fill, say, body parts. You can use satin stitches to fill shapes of any kind, geometrical figures. Suppose you are making... Um, a sunset kind of view and you want to uh, fill it uh, fill uh, you know a range of mountains behind which a sun is uh, setting so you can uh, create that with satin stitches because satin stitch is one of the most uh, common and easy as i already said and um, the more you practice on satin stitch uh, the better you become i would suggest if you're a beginner take two parallel lines and just start uh, filling those two parallel lines with you know say a uh, one centimeter long parallel line and you just start filling it with satin stitch you can make straight stitches you can make slanting stitches and that way you can train yourself to master the art of making satin stitches i have a video where i have uh, demonstrated how to trace a pattern on the fabric using a pilot friction heat erasable pen uh, pen do watch it and uh, also there is another video in which i uh, it is on my instagram where it shows how to finish the back of the hoop do watch that as well so here we are coming to the last dot filling the satin stitch as you can see that it is a very slow and patient process to make uh, such a fine work of embroidery so uh, this is how you can do it you can uh, run this video while you are practicing so that you can follow the steps that i have followed and do share uh, your uh, pictures of your embroidery whenever you do satin stitch and hashtag hazel craft store and i can share uh, your story um, your image on my story on my instagram page just completed the bottom wing of the butterfly now we are coming to the uh, dots on the upper wing of the butterfly uh, over here we are not filling it with satin stitch instead we are making an outline which is used by making back stitch so as i've already explained that back stitch is uh, one of the stitches which you can use to make outlines to make borders to make a uh, uh, to make uh, circles or uh, zigzag lines you can also write letters like monograms if you have to embroider so there's a lot that you can do with the back stitch and uh, as you can follow this video and you can understand that how the back stitch is done back stitch there is also a variation to the back stitch which is called the split stitch in this video i have not uh, used the uh, split stitch anywhere but there is another video if you will go to my uh, video section to my playlist you will find a video which is called friendship and uh, the letter friendship uh, i have embroidered using split stitch so uh, split stitch is a variation of the back stitch do have a look at that video and leave in your comments if you think that uh, watching that video has helped you In the olden times when uh, we did not have sewing machines, you will be very surprised to know that back stitch was also used as a stitch to join two fabrics because it is a very strong stitch because what happens is that you are actually going back. So you are doubling the stitch. So whenever you do not want to use a sewing machine or you do not have a sewing machine and you are mending a old 
uh, jeans or t-shirts uh, somewhere where the hem has uh, or the side seam has uh, ripped off or has uh, broken down so in those cases you can use a back stitch it is very good for mending uh, now in the modern age uh, because everybody has sewing machines and everybody has access to sewing machines so uh, the back stitch is not used so much for uh, sewing but at home suppose there is a little rip or the on the seam of your jeans or t-shirt uh, you can easily stitch it using back stitch so the back stitch has a lot of variations uh, it has a uh, the variation one of the variation is a threaded back stitch another variation as i already have shown is the whipped back stitch which I have used in most of the lines that I have embroidered in this butterfly. Then there is a split stitch which I just referred to which you can see in one of my other embroidery videos which is called the friendship embroidery video. Then uh, you have a ringed back stitch. In the ring back stitch, the back stitch is a work to create half rings. These are compl completed by second row of stitches to form ring outlines. So you can uh, look out for more videos which I will be posting soon in, uh, to show you the variations of the back stitch. When we finish making the next five dots uh, which have the back stitch, I will be showing you how I have done the outline of these uh, satin stitches in the indigo blue, sky blue and white color. Uh, how I have done the outline uh, to make the back stitch. So if you uh, stay here, do not go and you will be able to understand the outline of the stitches. So when you are making an outline uh, like I have done over here around the uh, different colors in the wings like the sky blue as you can see uh, that I am doing right now. Always do the back stitch after you finish the satin stitch. Do not do the back stitch before the satin stitch otherwise your back stitch will get hidden under the satin stitch because satin stitch by nature is a little raised stitch. So when you do a back stitch before the satin stitch, it is not a good idea. Always make the outline later. Outline is also done uh, on different kind of flowers or different kind of suppose you're making a hut or you're making a rainbow or you're making a, a say a image of a lion or an elephant or something and you've embroidered it with satin stitch. Uh, you can use a back stitch to make the outline of any kind of motif that you're embroidering to give it a more uh, defined shape to make it look more complete because if you see uh, wherever I have not made the back stitch the outline is not so uh, pronounced it is not looking that beautiful um, so uh, whenever you are making the back stitch it makes your embroidery look better it looks more fine There is another video which I did recently uh, which is of a mandala embroidery. You can see it in my playlist and that video, uh, that mandala pattern, uh, four patterns of mandala are also on my Etsy shop. The link is in the bio so you can feel free to buy. It'll, it is less than $5 so you will uh, really enjoy and the entire mandala is done by using only one. I have used only one stitch to make the entire mandala which is the back stitch. So you can pick up the PDF format from an Etsy shop, you can buy it and uh, you can uh, take any fabric which is available at home and the color of your choice and you can do the back stitch mandala and you can gift it uh, to uh, your friend, you can gift it to your uh, sister or your mother in different colors and you can also write their names. Uh, so it's a very nice birthday gift to give and uh, it will just take one or two days for you to complete. 
so try this craft uh, embroidery is something which is um, like a meditative process so i really enjoy doing it and i hope that you like this video and i hope that you will keep watching more of my videos going forward thank you if you want to buy uh, the pattern of um, this particular butterfly uh, you can go to the link in my bio my etsy shop etsy uh, you can find the link over there you can get four butterfly patterns uh, under five dollars you can buy it and you can take it's a digital pattern you can take a printout and i've already told you that i have another video which shows how to trace the pattern onto the fabric using a heat erasable pen so also buy one pilot friction pen to do your embroidery project it's very helpful satin stitch is a very easy procedure the most difficult or the challenging part of uh, making a satin stitch is to maintain the neatness especially at the edges of the pattern wherever you're filling the pattern the edges sometimes become uneven and that is the challenge that you have to overcome so to overcome this challenge there is one uh, thing that i have used here in this butterfly embroidery and that is specially advised for beginners is that make an outline of the satin stitch so that uh, any um, unevenness that you may have caused by making the satin stitch that is uh, covered by the outline stitch for making the outline stitches you can use a back stitch as you've already seen you can also make chain stitch you can use a split stitch or you can make a outline stitch or any other similar stitches which you uh, think is uh, suitable for you so what happens when you make an outline it helps as you can see uh, you, it helps to contain the satin stitch within the parameters of the pattern or the motif and also remember that when you're doing a satin stitch you do not have to pull the yarn too tight if you pull it too tight it will distort the fabric and if you loose if you keep the yarn loose it will sag the stitch so you have to make sure that you do not pull it too hard and you do not make it too loose also so the best thing to do is when you are making any uh, when you are doing any kind of embroidery is to use a hoop like a frame an embroidery frame to hold the fabric tight make the fabric as tight as possible on your frame and uh, tap it with your fingers to see whether it is uh, sounding like a drum and when the fabric is taut and your yarn has the same tension as the fabric tension then your fabric your satin stitch will come out very neat another very important tip to keep in mind is that uh, avoid doing very long satin stitches if you have a pattern which is very big and if you can divide it into different sections try to divide it in a different section so that you can uh, make shorter satin stitches or else you can opt for uh, different stitches in the satin stitch family uh, stitches like uh, encroaching satin stitch long and short stitch or brick stitch which uh, is very these stitches are very good to fill large areas or big size patterns so uh, you will be looking at some of my other videos in which i will be showing you the uh, variation i have a video of a uh, flamingo bird embroidery in which i have uh, filled up the entire flamingo bird using long and short stitch have a look at it and you will understand what i am saying when uh, i say that fill up the area of the um, bigger areas uh, using a variation of the satin stitch Thank you for watching. Thank you for being patient and watching this entire video. And I hope that you like the tips that I have given to you. And please share my video with your friends, with craft lovers. And also please subscribe for more informational and educative videos on embroidery coming up soon. Thank you.